Guten Rutsch ins neue Jahr. Yes, Happy New Year. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't you say it. It's not the new year yet. Huh? Oh, this must be your first Silvester in Germany. Well, just stick with me. I got you. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm a German who has been living in Cincinnati, Ohio for about four years now. But right now I'm at home in Munich, Germany over the holidays. And usually I'd be really hyped for today because I'm one of those rare people who love New Year's Eve. Most of my New Year's Eves have just been really amazing nights. But unfortunately, Germany is currently in a lockdown, which is why a lot of the things that I love about German New Year's Eve are canceled for this year. You're only allowed to meet up in groups with a maximum of five people coming from no more than two different households. There's a curfew starting at 9 p.m. even on New Year's Eve. They banned the sale of fireworks in Germany this year and they even made drinking alcohol in public illegal. So New Year's Eve is gonna be very different this year and you're probably asking yourself, why is she dumping all of this depressing stuff on me right at the beginning of the video? Well, because the good news is that we still have lots of German New Year's Eve traditions left that you can even do from your couch that you'll be sharing with your cat, your best friend, and the open Zoom app on your phone or whatever your situation is gonna look like. And you can bet your ass that I will be doing every single one of these traditions to make up for this mess of a year. But of course, it will be boring to do them all alone, so I'll let you guys in on all of the insider knowledge and the secrets of how to celebrate New Year's Eve like a real German. Okay, they're not really secrets, but you get my point. And then maybe you'll join me with some of these customs. If you do, it would be awesome if you could share them on Facebook or on Instagram and use the hashtag New Year's Eve with Feli. So hashtag N-Y-E with Feli. Because that way I can see your posts and I can share them and it'll actually be a little like we're celebrating a German New Year's Eve all together. So what do you need to know? First of all, let's talk about the most important German words and phrases that you need for this day. Obviously, we don't call New Year's Eve New Year's Eve in German, but we call it Silvester. Why did we give the day an actual human name? Trust me, we have no clue. Most Germans have probably never even thought about this. But of course, I looked it up for you guys and apparently it goes back to a Pope called Sylvester I who died on December 31st in the year 335. I also read that people around him mysteriously happened to choke on fish bones and die. And that's why superstitious people don't eat fish on New Year's Eve. Then you'll also need the phrase Guten Rutsch because that's what we say to people right before and on New Year's Eve. It literally means good slide. We also sometimes say guten Rutsch ins neue Jahr or Rutsch gut rüber, so good slide into the new year or slide over well. Sounds funny, I know, but just like we do it with birthdays in Germany, we do not wish each other a happy new year before the new year has actually started. That's a very important German rule for both birthdays and New Year's Eve. You do not wish someone a happy birthday until it's midnight on their actual birthday and you don't wish someone a happy new year if it's not actually the new year yet. All Germans watching this are probably like, duh, obviously, why is she explaining it like that? Well, because Americans wish each other a happy birthday days before the actual birthday. Many people even celebrate their birthday early in the US and people also wish each other a happy new year at the end of December. But that's not how we do it in Germany. Especially the birthday thing is considered to bring bad luck. So I don't know, does it bring bad luck if you wish someone a happy new year early in Germany? I'm not sure about that one, but fact is we don't do that here. So if you wanna celebrate like a real German, you you better get used to the phrase guten Rutsch. You'll say it to your colleagues when you last see them in December, to the cashier at the store, your neighbor, pretty much everyone. Legend has it that the phrase developed out of a Yiddish phrase that Germans misunderstood, but linguists have argued against that. So why do Germans think that the transition from one year to the next is like a slide? Absolutely no clue. And then as soon as it's midnight, people start saying Frohes Neues pretty much nonstop. Frohes Neues basically just means happy new one. The long version would be Frohes Neues Jahr, happy new year. And then of course, all the additions like Ich wünsche dir ein frohes, glückliches, gesundes und erfolgreiches neues Jahr 2021. Or something along those lines. By the way, if someone says it to you, all you need to say back is Danke, thank you, or Danke, ebenso. Thanks, you too. Okay, once you have the language part down, let's talk clothes. I think this part is pretty straightforward. Just dress for the occasion. If you're staying in with your cat, 
sweatpants are fine, but if you're invited to a party, Germans like to dress up nicely for Silvester. I mean, I think that's the case everywhere. A nice dress, a nice shirt, and especially for women, lots of glitter is the Silvester dress code that never goes out of style. Many people also follow the tradition of wearing red underwear for New Year's Eve. Apparently, it's supposed to bring luck. I'm actually not sure if this is just exclusively a women's thing, but I mean, that would be kind of sexist, so if it hasn't been a tradition for men until now, I think we should make it one. I looked at where this comes from, but apparently people aren't really sure. Some say it's an Italian tradition because it's a very common custom in Southern Europe. And apparently in the time of Caesar Augustus, red underwear was considered a lucky charm. Others say that it has Chinese origins because they consider red the color of luck and wealth. And I think in the US, I've heard that people wear yellow underwear. Well, I guess you'll have to replace that then. Now let's get to the entertainment part. This is one of my favorite parts actually, and it's a sketch that is on German TV all day long, every single year on December 31st. What, you don't live in Germany and can't access German TV channels? Well, then you should definitely pay close attention now because today's sponsor, ExpressVPN, might be able to help out with this. Because with ExpressVPN, you can access the internet from a virtual location. I've been using it ever since I moved to the US because there are many German videos and websites that are geo-blocked from me when I'm outside of Germany, including the live streams of German TV channels. But with ExpressVPN, I can just choose one of 94 countries and access the internet from there. I usually choose Germany, of course. And this even works with Netflix, which is cool because some of my favorite shows, including How I Met Your Mother and Modern Family, are available on the German Netflix, but not on the American one. So I've been using ExpressVPN to rewatch those shows without any ad breaks. And right now, while I'm in Germany, I can use it the other way around and access things from a US location. On top of that, it helps make your browsing experience more safe because even if you browse in incognito mode, your internet service provider can see what you're doing and gather information about you. And Express ExpressVPN adds a layer of protection to prevent others from being able to see what you're searching for and what sites you visit. If you want to find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free, make sure to check out the link in the description box below. It's expressvpn.com slash so what you need to watch at least once on December 31st in order to celebrate New Year's Eve like a real German is an English speaking black and white sketch from the 1960s called Dinner for One. Sounds random? Well, it kind of is, but it's become a tradition in Germany, and I personally love watching it. It's a sketch by the British author Laurie Weil, who wrote this in the 1920s, and then the comic Freddie Frinton bought the rights from him and played the sketch at British theaters, and was then invited to play it for German TV in the 1960s. And they liked it so much that they recorded it and showed it as a rerun every now and then, until they gave it a regular slot on New Year's Eve in 1972 and have been showing it on that day ever since. It can probably be described as some old school slapstick humor. All right, is old school slapstick humor a thing? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, I would definitely recommend watching it with a group of people and ideally after one or two glasses of champagne. Apparently, Frinton himself, who, by the way, plays the butler James in the sketch, wasn't a big fan of Germany after World War II, which is why he didn't want the sketch to be performed in German. And that's why watching a black and white English sketch is one of the biggest German New Year's Eve traditions today. It is a German production, though, by the German TV channel NDR, NDR, from 1963. There are also many alternative versions out there nowadays, like colored versions with German dubbing. There are even some with local German dialects, and Netflix actually just recently did a remake of it too, but I'd probably suggest starting with the original version first. And then maybe you'll be able to relate when I say, the same procedure as last year, Miss Sophie. The same procedure as every year, James. And yes, I know my British accent sucks. <laughs> okay, after you've watched that once or twice throughout the day, Maybe watch it one more time at night, just to be safe. You're probably gonna be hungry, so let's talk about food. I've mentioned this many times in some other videos of mine, but what can I do? It is the most popular New Year's Eve dinner in Germany, and it's raclette. 
and fondue. But raclette is even better in my opinion. It's fun because there's no need to really cook dinner for everyone because everyone's just gonna make their own right at the table. For raclette you need this cooking station with the little pans and then you get all kinds of ingredients like different meats, potatoes, mushrooms, zucchini, pickles and whatever you're in the mood for and then of course the raclette cheese. Then you can put the meat on top of the grill to fry it and you can put some of the other ingredients in your little pan, put a slice of cheese on top or two, I've heard that works too, and then you get this deliciousness. Now this is originally a Swiss dish and the Swiss people among you are probably gonna be like, you explained it all wrong, you're only supposed to put the cheese in the pan. Or maybe you're gonna say, raclette isn't even the name of the dish, it's the name of the cheese. Well, what can I say? This is how we do it in Germany. Just load up your pan with everything you like, put cheese on top, and don't forget about a big variety of dipping sauces. Fondue pretty much works the same way. You basically cook your food right at the table. And when Germans say fondue, well, actually we say fondue, um, but when we say that we don't usually mean cheese fondue, but instead we mean either broth or fat fondue. But of course there's also cheese fondue, chocolate fondue, and some other versions, and people do that too on New Year's Eve. Alternatively, fish, or carp to be more precise, is a traditional New Year's Eve dinner in some regions as well. And this has never been a tradition for me, but apparently Berliner or Krapfen, so jelly-filled donuts, are also a common food on New Year's Eve and traditionally a lentil soup is supposed to bring luck for the new year. So I don't know, do any of my German viewers eat lentil soup on New Year's Eve? Let me know in the comments below. Then after you've put all of that amazing food into your belly, it's time for Bleigießen, lead pouring. Okay, actually since two years ago, it's not called that anymore because it's not allowed to use lead anymore. Instead, they sell it with tin or wax now, but the wax version is not a worthy replacement at all if you ask me. Anyway, we still call it Bleigießen and here's how it works. So you can buy these kits at the stores. They come with little pieces of lead or, you know, the new material, a spoon and usually some kind of manual. Then what you do is you put a little piece of lead or other material on your spoon and hold it over a candle until it's melted. So let's do that. Then you should have a glass or a bowl with cold water next to you and then pour the melted material into the water and then it'll come out in a weird shape usually. I was a little slow because I'm talking to you guys at the same time. And also I unfortunately do only have the wax version, so it's not the best one, but usually you'll get some kind of three-dimensional shape and then you get to interpret it. And depending on what you see in this, that's the prediction of what the new year will bring for you. Of course, in many cases, it's just a clump, but it's still fun. Then of course, a very important part of this night is drinking for many people, playing games, maybe combining the two and playing drinking games. And many people also go out on that night usually. I personally prefer being at home with some friends though. What also plays a big role for German New Year's are lucky charms. You'll see them at the stores in different sizes and shapes and many people give these to each other as a little gift for the new year. They're often little pigs that are considered a lucky charm in Germany, often in the form of a marzipan pig, then four-leafed clovers of course, horseshoes, ladybugs and chimney sweepers. I was trying to find some to show you guys but I guess I don't usually keep that stuff. This is the only thing I could find, but at least it combines three signs in one. It's a pig, it has the clover, and also a ladybug. Now when midnight gets closer, Germans usually get ready to go outside. Not this year, of course, but this is what it's usually like, at least for me. So a little before midnight, everyone starts packing up some things like a champagne bottle. And when I say champagne, I mean Zekt, so sparkling wine, maybe some champagne glasses and some fireworks and sparklers. You put on your winter coat, maybe some gloves and a hat, and then you go outside together with pretty much everyone else in your area and then you usually head to an elevated spot like a hill or a bridge. Because one of the main things on German New Year's Eve usually is fireworks. People are usually allowed to shoot them on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day and stores are allowed to sell them a few days before. I'm mentioning this because when I celebrated New Year's Eve in the US, I realized that it's not like this everywhere. In the US, it's not very common for people to shoot fireworks for New Year's Eve. It's more common for 4th of July 
Friday, but in Germany, New Year's Eve is the main day for fireworks, firecrackers, and sparklers. Of course, there's also lots of criticism regarding fireworks because they're dangerous, of course, especially with people being drunk, and they also cause a lot of waste on German streets, and the noise is also disturbing for animals. So there have been more and more tendencies in the last few years of people refraining from fireworks, and some cities have banned them in certain neighborhoods, but they definitely still are a major part of German New Year's Eve. So if COVID wasn't a thing, I'd probably be going to the bridge by my house today with my family and my friends, see all the other people there that I know from school and from the neighborhood, we'd be bringing our champagne with us, we would shout the countdown with everyone, and then cheers and hug each other as soon as it's midnight. And then we'd probably shoot some fireworks and enjoy the view over all the fireworks that we can see in the far. We'd just stay there for a while, drink, because under normal circumstances you're allowed to drink in public in Germany, talk to people, enjoy ourselves, and then head back after a while and continue the night. Well, hopefully next year. And that was all that you need to celebrate New Year's Eve like a real German. A raclette or fondue set, a lead pouring kit, lots of alcohol, including some champagne for midnight, fireworks and sparklers, access to a TV or YouTube, some lucky charms, and of course, your favorite people around you. If you're doing any of these customs today, be sure to share it on Facebook or Instagram, it can be in your story too, and either tag me or use the hashtag NYE with Feli, so New Year's Eve with Feli. I'm excited to see your posts. Before I wish you guys a good slide into the new year, be sure to go over and check out Josh's and my podcast channel as well. It's called Understanding Train Station and we just released our 10th episode today also about New Year's Eve. And two weeks ago, we released a really interesting interview with Jay from the German YouTube duo Jay and Aria. They're really big in Germany, so we were honored that Jay joined us for an episode to talk about his experiences with being half German and half American and growing up in both countries. Check out the episode either as a video or audio version. All links are in the info box below. Then on a different note, I've noticed that there has been some confusion lately with a website that isn't mine, but that's also called so I just want to make sure that you guys know that that's not my website and germangirlinamerica at gmail.com also is not my email address. So just a heads up that that's not me, but Karen, who runs the other website, has some really cool content as well. So check out her website and her Facebook page. She shares a lot about German traditions and recipes and she also sells some German products there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, show me by hitting the thumbs up button and let me know in the comments below how you celebrate New Year's Eve. And of course, I'm excited to see your guys' posts on social media, hashtag NYE with Feli. You can find me on Instagram at German you can also find me on Facebook. And if you want to support my channel, you can do so on patreon.com slash and on buymeacoffee.com slash gg. Now I wish each and every one of you a good slide into the new year, guten Rutsch, and I'll see you in 2021. Prost and tschüss!